Welcome to the Reliance 6500 Endoscope Drying and Storage Cabinet in-service training program. This video supplements but does not replace the information provided in the Reliance 6500 Endoscope Drying and Storage Cabinet Operator Manual. Always follow the endoscope and equipment manufacturer's instructions and establish professional guidelines to properly reprocess an endoscope. A properly cleaned and disinfected or sterilized endoscope is essential prior to endoscope drying and use of the Reliance 6500 cabinet. The training program is divided into segments, so you can easily review specific topics as needed. These segments include available configurations, an explanation of key components, understanding the user interface, standard operation, supervisor mode, maintenance. Different configurations of the Reliance 6500 cabinet are available, including 12 and 20 endoscope capacity main units and 12 and 20 cabinet expansion modules to increase storage capacity up to a maximum of 40 endoscopes. In this in-service video, we will demonstrate with a 20 scope capacity main unit. The Reliance 6500 endoscope drying and storage cabinet consists of the following features and components. HEPA-filtered air is provided to the inside of the cabinet via ceiling-mounted vents to provide airflow over the stored endoscopes to facilitate drying of their external surfaces. The cabinet incorporates retractable endoscope storage panels, tube set connections, tempered glass doors, and LED lighting. Integrated into the main cabinet is a control unit, which incorporates the user touchscreen. Optional cabinet expansion modules are available to increase storage capacity by 12 or 20 scopes. Retractable storage panels allow storage of a wide range of endoscopes and can be configured to meet the facility's requirements. The panel incorporates a manifold into which the endoscope tube set is connected to provide channel purge air. A separate HEPA-filtered air supply provides channel purge air to support the drying of endoscope channels when connected to the endoscope with an appropriate tube set. All functions of the cabinet are controlled via a color touchscreen display located on the control cabinet. On the main screen, you will find the controls to operate the cabinet, information on which hangers are occupied, and the endoscope storage time status. The barcode scanner allows for ease of endoscope, operator, and supervisor identification. All data regarding endoscope and user loading and unloading is captured with this scanner, unless the data is manually entered. The scanner can switch between a stationary hands-free mode and a cordless handheld mode when the interior of the cabinet requires access. An on-off push-button switch is located on the front panel of the control unit. A USB port is located on the front panel of the control unit, which can be enabled or disabled in the supervisor mode. The user interface displays the following information. The user ID text box is required to be able to operate the cabinet. Users can enter their unique ID via the barcode scanner or using the virtual keyboard. The Endoscope's ID text box allows the user to enter an Endoscope ID. With the View Layout options, users can toggle between the Tile and List views. In List view, the user can sort endoscopes by hanger, type, and status. If only the main cabinet is being used, the hanger icons will be in a block identified by an L. If a cabinet expansion module is also added, a second row of hanger icons will be displayed and these can be identified by an R. A door status icon displays information if the main cabinet doors or expansion modules doors are open or closed. An information icon, which when selected, prompts users to consult the instructions for use and to wear appropriate PPE when using the cabinet. Current date and time, and a menu icon, which contains additional options and commands available in the supervisor and service modes. Endoscope status can be identified by the color of the hanger icon, which indicates green when the endoscope is ready for use, amber when the endoscope is on the last day of storage time, the integrated progress bar tracks the time to endoscope storage expiration. 
Red, when the endoscope storage time has elapsed. Gray, when the endoscope is within the first 10 minutes of the drying phase. Black, when the hanger is empty or cannot be selected. Blue, when the hanger is available when checking in or moving an endoscope. Dashed outline, identifies when an endoscope located inside the cabinet expansion module is about to be reassigned to a different hanger. Note, the outline color is based on the endoscope storage time and can be green, amber, or red. Before checking in the endoscope, the user has to be authenticated to be able to open the cabinet door. First, select an available hanger and slide the applicable storage panel out. Next, place the prepared endoscope on the selected hanger and connect the tube set to the manifold. Return the storage panel into the cabinet and enter the endoscope ID by using the barcode scanner or manually via the virtual keyboard. Select the corresponding hanger icon on the screen and ensure the check-in completed pop-up is displayed. If another endoscope is to be stored, choose Select Another and repeat the previous steps. Alternatively, select the checkmark icon to log out. Prior to checking out an endoscope, the user has to be authenticated to be able to unlock the cabinet door. It is recommended that the endoscope closest to its expiration time is used first. First, select the applicable hanger icon on the screen to display a dialog box and confirm the endoscope checkout. A pop-up confirms the endoscope was successfully checked out. The cabinet door can be opened and the storage panel extended. The tube set can be disconnected from the manifold and the endoscope removed from its hanger. If additional endoscopes are to be removed, repeat the removal procedure or close the cabinet door. If required, it is possible to reassign an endoscope from one hanger location to another. Access the cabinet by entering the user ID. Select the current hanger location on the screen and a dialog box will be displayed. Select the Move Endoscope icon and open the cabinet door. Slide the applicable storage panel out and disconnect the tube set from the manifold. Move the endoscope to the new hanger and connect the tube set to the manifold. Return the storage panel and close the cabinet door. Select a new hanger on the display and a dialog box will confirm the endoscope was successfully moved to a different hanger. To check an endoscope storage time status, select a highlighted hanger on the main screen and a dialog box will appear with the hanger number and location endoscope ID and serial number, days to expiration, and expiration date and time. To exit the dialog box, press the virtual exit button. To connect the tube set, first attach it to the relevant endoscope ports and connectors, and then place the endoscope on its hanger. Second, plug in the tube set to the cabinet purging system manifold on the storage panel. A click will be heard indicating correct connection. To disconnect the tube set, Press the metal tab on the manifold connector to release it. Then remove the endoscope from the cabinet and then the tube set. Downloading storage records from the cabinet requires the use of a USB drive. Single or all records can be saved. First, insert the USB drive into the USB port located on the control unit and then enter the supervisor mode. From the supervisor mode, select storage records. On the storage records screen, Search for a single record, and when identified, tap Download to save the information to the USB. When downloading all records, tap the Download button and tap OK. Or select Unsaved records to only download those that have not been previously downloaded. Once complete and back on the Storage Records screen, 
Tap Eject USB on the screen to safely remove the flash drive. Supervisor mode can be accessed via the toggle menu located in the upper left corner of the display or via the main screen using either barcode scanning or manual entry. Depress the menu button from the navigation bar and select Supervisor. Enter the user ID via the barcode scanner or manual entry using the virtual keyboard. To add new users to the cabinet, in the Supervisor menu, select People and Equipment and then the Manage User screen. Then, tap the plus icon. Next, in the User screen, tap the barcode field to display the ID barcode options. Enter the user ID via the barcode scanner or manually via the virtual keyboard. Tap the name field and type in the username using the virtual keyboard and confirm it using the check mark icon. Select the access level for that user as either operator or supervisor. Then select save and tap the check mark icon in the confirmation dialog box. Enter the manage user screen and select the profile to be removed. In the display dialog box, select delete, which will be confirmed in a further dialog box. To add new endoscopes to the cabinet, enter the supervisor mode as previously described. Select people and equipment. Select the manage devices screen and then tap the ID barcode field. Enter the endoscope details using the barcode scanner or manually via the virtual keyboard. Tap the manufacturer serial number field and type in the scope serial number using the keyboard. Once complete, select OK to submit the changes. Select the model number field and enter the data using the keyboard. Tap OK to confirm. To remove endoscopes from the cabinet, enter the Manage Devices screen and select the endoscope to be removed. Select Delete. A dialog box confirming that the delete action is required is displayed. Select OK. If updates are required to either the user ID or endoscope ID, select People and Equipment, then select Manage. Follow the on-screen instructions. A number of settings can be configured by the supervisor, such as date and time, facility name, and storage time, all of which are detailed in the operator manual provided with the cabinet. The cabinet should be cleaned and disinfected on a regularly scheduled basis within the facility, and more often if needed. Here's an example of a cleaning schedule that can be used as a guideline for determining the frequency of routine cleaning and disinfection. It is also recommended that a cleaning log is maintained at the facility. The cabinet will provide the user with alarms, alerts, and error messages as appropriate. Alarms are designed to warn the user that the cabinet is experiencing an abnormal state and is indicated by an alarm tone and touchscreen display. Alerts assist users in detecting and managing potential issues, and these will either be a warning or a reminder. Finally, error messages inform users of a problem that has already occurred. For additional troubleshooting, please refer to the operator manual. It lists common problems and the appropriate corrective actions. If your problem persists or you need additional assistance, please contact Steris Technical Support. This concludes the in-service training for the Reliance 6500 Drying and Storage Cabinet. For more information, contact your Steris representative.